One of Scott's targets, Josh Lowe, is dealing with a hip injury. Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Friday, March 1st. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And let's start with some of the latest news. Josh Lowe has left hip inflammation and will be shut down for six days. Apparently, the Rays are not overly concerned, but he will not play in a game for two weeks. And, you know, Scott, we're about four weeks away from opening day. Uh, someone that you like to target in drafts, Josh Lowe. How do you feel about this injury? I, you know, I'm, it's it's not it's not like no concern whatsoever. It's it's the sort of thing inflammation that could uh, linger, that could reveal more in time if it does linger. But in all likelihood, it's not a big deal. I mean, what Lowe said himself was, "I feel okay. It's just something that I would rather get taken care of right now than let it linger and then have to miss time during the season." which would suggest he feels like he could, he could play through it if he had to, but it's spring training, so what's the point? Uh, it doesn't sound like it's supposed to sideline him for the start of the season. If it does lead to an overreaction, just because, you know, there's there's only so much, there's only so many players who are getting that red cross to their next to their name right now in the draft room. If it does call him to couple fall a couple of rounds, then uh, I will be happy to take advantage. I already thought Josh Lowe was being underdrafted, particularly given how scarce outfield is and uh, all the stolen base upside he offers. He was one of, let me see if I can count this up real quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six. He was one of six players to have at least 20 homers and 30 steals last year, even though he wasn't in the lineup quite every day. And the other five are Ronald Acuna, Corbin Carroll, Bobby Witt, Julio Rodriguez, and is there one more? Yeah, Francisco Lindor. Mm -hmm. So good company. Yeah, the ADP over the past week for Josh Lowe is 71.8. So that's just a reference point. If you're in any drafts and he falls significantly past that, again, you could look to uh, take advantage there on Josh oh. Lowe. I missed a couple. Kyle Turner, <laughs> Kyle Tucker, and Trey Turner. So another another couple first rounders had at least twenty homers and thirty steals. Okay, let's talk about Robert Stevenson. Scott, he's been dealing with shoulder soreness. He's confident that he'll pitch in the spring, but not sure that he'll be ready for opening day. The Angels went out and made a pretty big investment, three year deal worth, I believe, thirty three million dollars for Robert Stevenson. This could open the door for a, a potential potential longer leash. For Carlos Estevez, everything we've heard is that he is still the Angels' closer. Yeah, Ron Washington said, right now we've got him as a closer, so we don't need to talk about that. So they are they are giving Carlos Estevez all the leash he could ask for right now, more than he deserves after how bad he was in the second half in ERA over 650, and he's long had control problems. Uh, Robert Stevenson was arguably the best reliever in baseball after joining the Rays last June. So it seems like only a matter of time before that change is going to happen. But, you know, Carlos Estevez was an all-star last year, too. He had a, too, he had a really good first half. Um, and he just he talked about needing to get stronger for the whole season. He, he worked on that this offseason. It, it could be that he turns out to be serviceable enough, particularly if Stevenson is sidelined early, that the opportunity never really opens for them to make a change. That is a possible scenario. I think it is... Uh, I, I think the more likely scenario is again that Estevez loses the job to Stevenson at some point, but but um, yeah, Estevez should get a nice head start at least. Let's wrap up with this, Scott. Not exactly news, but maybe newsworthy. Paul Skeens, who was the top pick in last year's MLB draft, arguably the top pitching prospect since Steven Strasburg, he did make his uh, spring debut on Thursday, he threw only one inning of work. Touched 102 miles per hour with the fastball. And people are tweeting at us. They're asking, when are we going to see Paul Skeens? <laughs> I don't think it's opening day. Um, if I had to guess, I, I would think like June, July. But maybe I'm just being conservative there. <sighs> you know, it, for a team that's out of contention, which I expect the Pirates to be, they they could. it's possible enough goes right that they're fringe contenders, but it seems pretty unlikely. And if they're not contending 
midseason. I don't know that there's much incentive to bring up Skeens then. Uh, a late September trial that will preserve his rookie eligibility for the following year. Because remember, teams are incentivized now to have their top prospects on the roster on opening day. Because if 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 they're on the roster for the full season, their rookie year, and they go on to place high in awards voting for the next several years, the team gets a draft pick reward because of that. But they have to be on the roster from the beginning. So I, I agree it's unlikely he's on the roster from the beginning this year, Paul Skeens. But that probably means we're not seeing him till September, unless the Pirates are surprise contenders. That would be my guess. But yeah. They 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 obviously will make their own decision. That new incentive system it, it does kind of create this little bit of an in between, right? It's you know, do we push this guy and have him up on opening day, or do we wait and you know maybe call him up later in the year, as you mentioned, and and then try and start that clock the following year on opening day? So. We'll see what happens with Paul Skeens and the Pittsburgh Pirates, but if for some crazy reason they are lingering, there is an expanded playoff pool now, uh, then yeah, we could see Paul Skeens earlier in the season. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 